Hello and welcome to this tutorial on using CGFX in uh, Maya. CGFX is a programming language that allows you to create shaders. Uh, shaders are materials that you can put on geometry to create really interesting effects in the Maya viewport. Uh, they're used a lot in video games because they let you uh, create uh, stunning effects uh, really quickly. But they're also really nice in the Maya viewport because um, not only do you not need an entire shading network in order to make a single effect, uh, you can do it all in one node, but you can actually see it rendered uh, on your, on your uh, graphics card in the viewport in real time, which can give you real advantage in seeing how things look. Now today I'm going to show you something um, called a geometry shader, which actually alters the geometry of the object that you have, which can uh, make some really neat effects. So I'm going to start off by creating a plain old cylinder. I'm going to zoom in and press uh, number 6 to go into the uh, material rendering mode. And now I'm going to bring up the hypershade. I'm going to click on Siege Effect Shader. And now I am going to load uh, my geometry shader into there. I'm going to create a fur shader. So there's fur shader CG. Open that. And you see that loaded it. And um, it, my fur shader is all ready to go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that material and I'm going to put it on my cylinder here. And you can see it's already been shaded and it's already started to add geometry to it. See this little row of whiskers here. I'm going to make those a little bit longer so you can see them better by upping the fur length. There. It's got a nice ring there. Now the way this works, I'm going to click on the geometry so you can sort of see the faces again. Uh, what it's doing, uh, what the shader is doing in the code is each quad uh, it takes in, it turns that into a 4x4 four four patch of whiskers. So you see because these quads are very long and narrow right now, uh, the whiskers are very spread out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the number of tessellations on that cylinder uh, so that you can uh, get a nice, a much denser coat of fur there. So first we're going to uh, really increase the number of height divisions there. And maybe some more divisions around. Maybe let's make that 30. Yeah, that looks good. And probably want to add some caps too. So make that 3. And just gonna. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure why. Sometimes my uh, uh, screws up the UVs here. Uh, but let's make that 28. Does that. Yeah. Anyway, this worked on my test run. Um, sometimes uh, Maya doesn't calculate the UVs correctly and you get all this weird extras. Anyhow, uh, that's good enough for the purposes here. Um, so anyway, so there you can see the fur. And I'm going to click back on the fur shader. And now we can sort of now, each and every one of those strands is a line being generated in real time from the surface of the geometry out into the real world. But uh, right now it looks kind of straight and stiff, kind of looks like a wire brush, doesn't really look like fur. So what I'm going to do is change the physical properties of the fur. First thing I'm going to do is give the hair some mass. So right now it's very light, it's only... Uh, 0 0.01 grams, so I'm going to make that a little bit heavier, and it's going to start to sag a little bit. Next thing I'm going to do is take the stiffness, I'm going to bring that way down, Oops, a little bit too much, maybe make the hair a little bit more massive, you see it's starting to droop, and the sort of more it droops, the more it starts to look like actual fur. Maybe want to take that hair mass all the way up to maybe 2. And now it's really starting to droop. So that's a sort of neat physical property there. And um, actually another thing we can do is we can add color to the uh, fur. 
going to click on there to bring up a just regular texture map and click on there and browse to our texture. We're going to just reuse this uh, map that I used in the previous tutorial just to give you some idea of what the color will, will look like. And Oh, wait a second, I think the UVs are wrong. So let me go back to the CGFX shader. All right, let's just uh, take that fur length right back down again so we can see what the surface looks like. Yeah, that looks wrong. So uh, let's add some UVs on that, create UVs, cylindrical mapping. And that is looking more like the colors we want. Going to click object mode. And let's make that for a little bit longer again. Oh, that's not what I wanted. And fur length. Now you see, when it comes out, that fur is exactly the same color as the color map underneath it. And let's make it longer. And see, that fur is just grown straight out with the uh, as if it was growing out from the skin and that skin was given in its color. This may be a little bit too long. Let's give him a haircut. There you go. And anyway, one of the neat things, another neat thing about using this technique is that you can uh, control properties like gravity. So I'm going to click on there, going to press the rotate tool. Now watch what happens to the direction of the fur as I rotate this. See? it is following the direction of gravity. And yeah, see uh, it's, it's waving its top there, so it looks like it's got a fuzzy haircut at the top. But even all these down here, every single one is pointing straight down in the direction of gravity. And that's a, that would be a really difficult effect to do uh, if you didn't have a nice uh, shader behind it, uh, CGFX shader to do all the physics calculations for you. So there it is. Uh, there's a lot more you could do with this. You could uh, turn those, all those little spikes into actual little tubes of hair rather than just lines. Um, you could add some neat shadowing effects. You can maybe make the uh, roots of the hair darker than the tips. But uh, I think that's a nice demonstration of what you can do. Uh, with uh, geometry shaders and CG effects, how to create a really neat furry appearance uh, in the Maya viewport.